Welcome. This is the Life Habits Podcast Series, and my name is Carl Vredenberg. This is Episode 5 in the series, and the topic for this particular session is Working Remotely. And this overall series is one to help you learn new habits, to optimize your life, and to stay sane in this crazy world. Now, let's start this particular topic off by uh, starting off with a quote, as we always do. And this one is from uh, Joe Bittner. And he says, uh, many not only work from home, but they can also work from a remote island if they want. A lot of what we do is to go out and meet our clients. But once you've sat down and discussed with them their business plan, you can do the actual work from any location. And that's the overall you know, theme of this session, you know, uh, Tom Friedman wrote, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the world is flat and that tended to have a significant, uh, impact <coughs> in understanding, uh, what's going on in the world in terms of, of the world of work. And that, um, there were lots and lots of themes of, uh, what he talked about in that book, but a core one, uh, was the fact that work, uh, can be and is often being done from, many different uh, locations and places and that this also directly affects employees um, as well as their families and the ways that organizations work etc. And I find it interesting <coughs> that um, I've seen a, a significant amount of uh, working from home or working remotely going on in my place of work um, and what's interesting is, and a number of my colleagues as well uh, that work at other companies, and what I find interesting is that there's very little discussion of sort of best practices for this type of work. And uh, it's just sort of assumed that people go and do this, and it's either encouraged or allowed by management. And some of the time it's uh, prompted by an employee wanting to work a particular way for uh, a variety of reasons in terms of their uh, life circumstance. Or it might also be the case that um, employers desire that as well for uh, uh, cost reasons, etc. Or you find, may find yourself in uh, working in a, an environment where the job that you have or the organization that you work with may be uh, farther away from where you uh, currently are. It's been my own experience that uh, I've worked um, remotely in one respect uh, for a long time, and that is working for a boss that's in another country and who I don't get together with uh, in person virtually at all. Uh, and f a few years ago, uh, we used to travel a lot more. We used to travel to get together, and that was a previous manager. Um, but that world of being managed by or reporting into an organization that is not within the country that I am in is um, is something I've lived for a long time. It actually is very um, different than uh, working in uh, an organization where you're you co-locate with you know, the organization and the boss that you have. So th that's one aspect of it. The other one is uh, actually having staff. I've got staff uh, that are in other countries, are in other time zones, other staff that um, choose to uh, work from home uh, as their own personal choice, uh, and then others like myself who uh, choose to work from home um, one or two days a week. And I'd like to start off by actually describing those three kind of models. <clears throat> when you talk about remote work, can uh, typically have, and again, the one that, that, that I do, which is working from home uh, one to two days per week um, and uh, organize the days in such a way that that is possible. And we'll go into some best practices in a minute. The second situation is uh, working from home most of the time, but uh, living close enough to an office to visit the office for face-to-face -face meetings part of the time. The other uh, model is to uh, work from home all of the time and be far away from any office and often in a different country and a different time zone. And so when we talk about remote work or working from home, uh, it actually covers sort of all of those 
uh, and there's probably even more differences than those, but just for the sake of discussion today, just wanted to go over what the most common sort of scenarios might be. And so each of those have their own unique challenges, and I'll try to point out some of those in a minute. Um, but I, I think the, uh, the 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 notion that there are these kinds of different ways of of working uh, from home uh, are are important to consider. Um, the the situation of the working from home, you know, one to two days a week uh, can be a way of getting particular work done, and and as I'll get into in a little while, you know, might be uh, uh, desirable for a certain type of work. And, and I've had I've actually requested staff to actually work from home some of the time if they've got some piece of work that need to be doing that um, really would do be done best, you know, with real heads down focus. Um, that's often better done in an env environment that uh, you can control, and we'll get into what some of the criteria might be for doing that. Uh, the other one of, of really working from home most of the time, but still being able to, for meetings and the like coming in uh, to the office, uh, can and w is, is ideal for many people. Uh, it's really a an ideal environment, as we'll get into in a minute, for um, situations that uh, involve, you know, working uh, with regard to um, a home situation that may require it, and also uh, less uh, uh, strain and the like. Uh, so we'll go through some of those in a minute. Uh, the one that is probably the most challenging to experience, and given Friedman's book, um, the one that is becoming more and more common is this notion of um, working really remotely, working in another time zone, another country. And if you're also uh, working from home, uh, there are, are really significant challenges, I think, in working that way. Now, as an overall, you know, as a manager, a senior manager, and trying to decide, you know, what might be right for staff, um, I've I've given a lot of this a lot of thought. And in my sense, uh, it makes a lot of sense to weigh the costs and benefits of, for example, that latter situation where you've got somebody that is working uh, significantly remotely, another um, uh, another city, another country, uh, another time zone, and the um, some of the real benefits are of uh, to the organization, to the manager, um, maybe to be able to get the absolute best skill for the job. So if you've got a very very specific requirement for a particular type of skill, um, rather than being limited by the local geography uh, and the available resources in that geography or that, that local area, uh, it's, it's actually really powerful to be able to look v widely and not be limited by that as a constraint and be more diverse in being able to find the best person in the world for, for to be able to do that job. So you can get hugely uh, beneficial um, you know, quality of skills uh, and the like in that way. Uh, some organizations do it too in actually getting uh, staff in uh, countries that are less expensive uh, as well. And uh, that could be a benefit as well to the organization. Now, a lot of the time, I think when those decisions are made, um, not enough it, uh, thought is given to uh, some of the downside and some of the challenges, both from the uh, home organization, if there is a local organization, if not everybody is remote, which is sometimes the case as well. But um, if there's a, a location to sort of team and then there are uh, satellite remote you know, members, there, um, uh, the, in my experience, you really need to have uh, significant benefits with regard to the overall um, quality of skill you can get or a lower cost um, to outweigh some of the challenges in that kind of an environment with regard to um, you know the additional linkages and communication challenges that uh, we'll get into uh, as well as the uh, especially in the case of time zone differences as well and some of the time cultural differences and language differences come into play there as well so that that situation is sort of the most extreme version uh, the other one, in terms of working from home most of the time, but living close enough to to visit, like I said, is actually quite a a desirable one, an increasingly desirable one to um, employees, certainly in the in my own team, uh, that have that uh, choice. 
<clears throat> and can actually be heads down for um, their their work and and the like. And we'll go through some of the benefits, the challenges, and also the advice um, that uh, and I'll get a, uh, input here from a variety of sources. But also very importantly, I recently in a, a department meeting asked my staff to capture their experiences because a lot of them uh, work. Uh, we work actually in each of these three uh, modes of working remotely. So I've captured from them their uh, thoughts on the benefits, the challenges, and any advice or best practices that they've um, gleaned uh, after working this way for a while. And they also all reinforce the notion which actually prompted me to also want to make this a topic of this particular podcast, is that's actually very little information available on this topic, even though there's a lot of people that work this way now, and not a lot of people are actually talking about it or sharing experiences on it. So I'll try to provide some kinds of insights um, in this session for anybody that's actually thinking of working this way or is working this way and they want to optimize um, the ways in which their remote work actually happens. So let's just go through the benefits first of all and I won't make a big distinction between each of those categories of remote work um, but we'll just make reference to them uh, occasionally. So the overall set of benefits are flexible work hours and this is the notion as well of not necessarily having to spend a lot of time commuting uh, and as I always uh, say for people that want to work uh, remotely we, we can you know uh, share the difference split the difference in terms of if they're normally spending you know an hour or two you know traveling to and from work you know just uh, you know divide it in half and and use some of it for uh, for work and the other one for for, for yourself. Um, so that's a, a significant benefit, the, the redu reduction in, you know, the dollars for, for, for paying for gas, the um, lack of frustration in terms of working in and or driving in uh, rush hour traffic, you know, finding parking spaces and all of that kind of thing are, are a, a huge benefit for working uh, more flexibly and working from home because you don't need to be spending your time actually traveling to the office. And that's actually when you add that up over the course of months and years, it's a lot of time that you uh, could be spending, uh, like I say, on personal endeavors as well as uh, if you want to actually get uh, work done. The other uh, <laughs> comments that's, uh, that was made is that, you know, there's a benefit is they're le less likely to spend a lot of money on things like uh, going and buying coffee and going and and, and spending money essentially out um, at the office where you tend to buy things like that or pay, pay for lunches and that kind of stuff so there's even you know savings in in that uh, in that realm uh, the other you know much more substantive benefit is getting a lot more work done and not as likely to get sidetracked by other discussions going on and noise around in the environment and that kind of thing or just general interdu you know interruptions um, as I said earlier it's it's really the environment assuming that you have the right environment to really be heads down you know on work for good chunks of time and not um, uh, be distracted uh, as easily which you know is, is maybe also a testament to um, or, or yeah, an indictment of the a typical work environment which is also often now not individual offices, but, you know, cubicles and all. And uh, there are times when that kind of environment can very well be noisy and, and distracting. So if you have a better environment or you can make a better environment ho at home, that's a, uh, an ideal benefit for doing this kind of uh, work. The other one that was mentioned was no uh, no need to go and search for conference rooms or meeting rooms and that sort of thing when you need to go talk to somebody. And uh, there again, you just sort of pick up the phone or um, use uh, whatever communication capability you know you uh, you're you're able to use. And there's also an argument for. Uh, needing to uh, uh, not uh, schedule as many, you know, breaks for um, just going out and or going to lunches, and there's actually some controversy about that. I was also argu arguing that you actually have a greater need when you're uh, working from home uh, for that kind of thing, as we'll get into in a minute. Um, and it's also uh, uh, argued that one of the benefits is to be, you know, more available uh, to be contacted as well. And this is uh, particularly the case when 
you have a, a work environment that also involves people in other time zones and the like that uh, if you are you know uh, less um, linked to the typical uh, work day uh, you're uh, uh, better able to say, okay, well, I'm going to work from uh, the first thing in the morning till <clears throat> noon, and then say I'm going to take off, you know, three days, uh, three three uh, hours, let's say, in the middle of the day, and I'm going to pick it up again, you know, later. If say your your home environment uh, lends itself to that, and then you can also cover, let's say, by by working, um, you know, later in the evening or whatever, or earlier in the morning, uh, other time zones as well, which is often. Uh, the case when you're working with an international team, you need to do that kind of thing anyway. Whereas, you know, if you're at the office and you're trying to cover different time zones, uh, you can. It's very difficult to actually go uh, take off three hours for uh, for an extended lunch, for example. Uh, it's it's not not as uh, conducive um, to that, and uh, people you know wonder where you are and stuff. So, th in ter in terms of the, the category of challenges. Uh, and there's a bunch of these, you know, there's no ad hoc sort of water cooler uh, discussions. There's less informal communication opportunities, you know, available. And this, again, when you uh, look at the three models of types of working from home that I mentioned off the top, this one is obviously the most significant for people that are know very far away and can't even come into the office so there's um, very little regular chit chat you know that goes on um, and also a, a lessened ability to actually pick up on things that are happening and people have even argued you know being aware of opportunities for new jobs and that kind of thing that may end up happening in discussions out in the hall or just just uh, um, impromptu uh, kinds of discussions, and uh, that typically doesn't doesn't uh, happen. Uh, there's a other challenge that was mentioned about really having tunnel vision, since there's much less contact with other team members, uh, and as well as even people that are unrelated to your mar main area of responsibility. You tend to be really really focused on the work that you're doing, and um, n have really a have blinders on. Uh, and while that may be beneficial for getting work done, uh, and it might be particularly advantageous, and I certainly find this actually a, an advantage if you're working the one to two days uh, per week, uh, where you can in fact have tunnel vision and actually focus on, on work um, that you want to get done that of a particular type. If you do work from home all the time, every day of the week, or if you're uh, in a, the third situation where you're very far away from any office, then uh, that tunnel vision can end up being a, a real negative. The um, argument also is that conference calls, which are typically the ways of communicating if you're working remotely, especially in that third uh, uh, type of model of remote work, that uh, conference calls are much less effective than face-to-face -face meetings. And that, uh, uh, you know, the the simple act of um, being together in the room, being able to acknowledge each other, be able to see, see facial expressions and all the rest of it, um, is pretty important. It's especially important if you're in a situation where there may be some real, you know, acrimony or there's some challenging work and that it really is important that t the team work very, very effectively together. And that would be verbally and non-verbally, and it's very hard to pick up on that nonverbal communication. And the other thing I would add is that it's um, also a different situation when the topology is, is such that if everybody is working from home, that's one thing. Then uh, everybody's working remotely, everybody's on the same level playing field. If, on the other hand, you really have a, a number of people that are in the office, but, you know, one or two or three people that are calling in remotely into a conference call, they tend to be at a disadvantage. They tend to, you know, uh, even if you've got reasonably reasonable sound equipment, at least in our experience, um, they may well not pick up on some of the quieter conversation that might happen in the room. Somebody may push back from the table or walk up to the board and want to, you know, uh, um, illustrate a point and and we always have uh, a handicap for the people who are working remotely on those kinds of conference calls uh, as well. Um, the notion of there being a fine line between personal and professional lives uh, that's uh, easy to cross and the uh, if you're working from home you have to have you know a major 
discipline to really differentiate your work life from your home life because uh, you could easily find yourself working nonstop and there generally is a an, an experience that um, I've certainly experienced and also have, have heard about of uh, of people not being able to uh, stop the workday very effectively and that, again it takes real practice and some real dedication and and uh, a really good habits in actually being able to you know make that uh, that distinction and say okay now my work has stopped and you're not working all the time now that you're you know working from home also the um, <coughs> There's less access to your normal sources of help for a quick assistance. Again, um, the number one experience in, ter in terms of working with software, for example, if somebody has a problem with software, is to call over to the person in the next cubicle for help. Well, that's not as easy to do if you know the person in the next cubicle is actually your dog, or you know your uh, your six-year-old or whatever. Although you know six-year-olds can often <laughs> provide some pretty good uh, help in terms of software problems. But it, but the overall uh, point here is that you don't have as direct you know access. Now um, this is somewhat um, you know mitigated by now being able to use instant messaging which we'll get into in a minute um, that you can provide pretty that provides pretty well um, direct access to a lot of these kinds of sources but the point is that it's not quite the same still as being able to just you know uh, walk over to somebody's cubicle and ask them the question or when you see them in the in the line for coffee or whatever to uh, ask them the, the, the question. Um, there's also a um, a tendency to sit at your desk for uh, long, long periods of time, and uh, with not having, you know, the, the need to get up and go to a meeting, for example, um, or being able to uh, go and uh, grab something else, um, or be interrupted and then go into a, a meeting room, or go walk down to to lunch together with your colleagues and that sort of thing. Um, there's a tendency when you're working from home to not get a lot of physical exercise and also a real sense of sort of cabin fever that uh, you don't get out, you don't see as many people, and uh, it can get to be a lonely uh, existence. Also there's a, an increased sense of overall isolation and not being integrated with the larger enterprise. You're in your electronic cottage and you uh, aren't uh, linked up to the regular kinds of, of um, experiences with other staff and that sort of thing as well as just being feeling part of the company uh, so to speak. And again this is probably the uh, most significant experience for people that are in that uh, third category. Um, but it can also be the case for you know people in, that are in the second category in terms of working from home uh, most of the time. Uh, I think it's really a matter of degree uh, with the uh, these three uh, kind of models that we've been talking about as well. There's also a sort of a lack of presence awareness of the remote team members among the local meeting uh, participants and sort of what I was getting at earlier but this notion of out of sight out of mind and that probably has a lot of different ramifications but one of the most common uh, ramifications is that um, if you don't see somebody sitting there in a meeting room uh, if they're just the phone that's on the you know conference phone on the table you're um, much less likely to refer to them or ask them for their opinion than um, if you were just looking around the uh, table in person and that's probably also even the case that you know if it uh, it's probably not even a matter of just not remembering them or, 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 or remembering to ask them a question even that nonverbal stuff that we talked about earlier if you're simply looking around the the, the people in the room somebody may look expectant and and look obvious uh obviously wanting to uh raise a point uh and that you're more likely if you're running the meeting to look to them then and say oh yeah you, you have a um you know point to make then uh, you know give them that opportunity and stop talking for a minute as as somebody else in the meeting whereas if somebody that's on a conference conference call for example um has to be ex much more explicit by actually making their presence known verbally or uh, to, to be able to get the attention and to be obvious that they you know wanted to ha say something so uh, unless you're re really a um, 
a more assertive kind of person, it may well be the case that you contribute less to the meetings unless the person that's running the, the meeting is, is um, very effective as make, at making sure that he or she uh, solicits uh, input from all members of the team and not just those that are in attendance uh, in person. So, so there's those kinds of, of um, you know, factors that are really uh, the challenges you know, in this uh, uh, kind of model. And there are also some other um, bits of advice that um, uh, have been gleaned and gathered uh, from the team, you know, as well, and the uh, and from elsewhere as well. And let me just go through some of the bits of advice here. So, in the environment, and this is largely the one of working from home most of the time, uh, or wanting to work from home all of the time, but still being able to come to an office, for example. Uh, the recommendation is to try to come into the office at least once or twice per week, um, especially for any important meetings. So you might well want to be working from home all of the time, um, but uh, it may just as easily be uh, possible for you to participate in the meetings by um, by calling into them uh, uh, and, and because you're a full-time employee working from home. Um, but you may well want to make the exception uh, for, let's say, one or two days a week, or it might not even be for the whole day. It might be just that you go in for a Wednesday afternoon because that's when your department meeting happens, etc. Et and some advice here, too, for people that are organizing meetings or, or running teams, uh, it's also a good idea to have a regular set of days when you have your team meetings and your personnel one-on-one meetings and that sort of thing. That's typically what I try to do to have a core set of days of the week. In my case, it's it's from uh, it's it's essentially Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of the week are the days that we really have the face-to-face uh, -face meetings. And uh, it doesn't mean that that remote employees that are working from home, you know, most of the time need to come in for all three of, three of those days, but they may well come in for, for one day, and and uh, during that same day, they, they're they there for a department meeting, for example, and they'll also be there for a project meeting, and might also be there for the, uh, for let's say a one-on-one -on -one meeting with their with their manager, um, and then they would use the, that opportunity as well to use the time during the time they're, they're going to be in the office to do some significant face-to-face -face, um, you know, meetings with, with other people um, that particular day, also to plan on going out to lunch you know, with uh, team members, really try to optimize the interaction work you know, when you're coming in to the office. Um, in cases where people are you know, very far away um, in another country and that sort of thing. Uh, it's really uh, desirable to um, try to arrange a face-to-face -face meeting still, you know, it might be once a quarter um, or maybe twice a year, depending on how far they may be and what the situation within a company may be in terms of, you know, the travel policy on that sort of thing, the, the expense policy. But um, it really is a, a, a great practice to at least have face-to-face -face time and then uh, come to, the, if there's a home-type office, I mean, if there's a, 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 a a central a location uh, for the company that the rest of the team or a good chunk of the team is at to then arrange uh, to have a bunch of you know planning meetings for example and have uh, all the staff you know fly in for that and then not make that sort of a one or two day sort of trip but make that a longer one so that you have like a whole week together and um, when those kinds of weeks happen uh, let's say they're once a quarter or once a um, every um, uh, half year or even once a year to also then to do the you know majoring on taking the whole team out for lunch and having other activities in the evenings that might be team building is to really sort of um, mash into that week all the opportunities for interaction and um, you know team meetings uh, all all at once and so uh, that's that's the time to really optimize you know on doing that kind of uh, work the other bit of advice is to get a good quality speakerphone uh, with mute. Uh, the mute capability is extremely important and there's not not a lot of phones when you buy buy sort of uh, the uh, portable phones and that sort of thing um, where you can actually get uh, get that uh, but it's critical for this situation and the other one is if you're if you're getting 
um, a phone for home uh, that has a um, you know a battery in it uh, you might want to have replaceable phones or replaceable batteries as well so you can switch right from one to another because if you end up being in on a call for many hours let's say some big you know monthly operations review type meeting or whatever then uh, your phone won't die you know during all of that and you'll be able to, to flip over and and use um, use that uh, a backup system you know the other one to to consider and and whatever system you use you need to i think invest in uh really good quality equipment because you know the way that you communicate remotely electronically will be critically important and there are, uh, you know i've had people have you know cheap headsets or cheap phones calling uh into meetings from home and and they chose to work from home let's say and actually you know using really cheap equipment and here you're you know all it takes you know is is to buy let's say a good you know headset for like you know forty fifty dollars or something um and have really good connection and always being able to hear or whatever um uh, versus you know uh, scrimping on on the equipment equipment that you're going to use for your primary communication if you're coming in and, and working from a uh, a home office uh the other thing to to consider is to uh use voice over ip um and also directly on your uh computer i know uh, you know where 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 it's possible to do this uh to use uh services like Skype uh which has a you know computer to computer capability that my experience has much better quality than um a lot of regular phones uh it also has the capability of doing Skype out and Skype in you know where you can also call conference call numbers you can also call you know uh cell phones and landline numbers and all that kind of thing and you also have the benefit of that you know that's not battery operated that you're connected directly in and you often if you have a really good high speed line into your home uh you can be very well connected uh using that kind of a system the other thing to uh, uh consider is using a separate home office if it's possible that is a a separate room uh that ends up being your home office and it should be treated that way if there are other uh, family members in the house they know that when you're going into that room um that you're going to work and that it isn't the case that you know uh mommy or daddy can be bothered when they're in that room uh the overall uh, uh sense that should be created is that and for the rest of the family and also for yourself that you should really consider that that is you going to work it's just your your commute to work may be just a walking across the hall you know from your from your bedroom or whatever but it really is i think important to um where it's possible to do that really have a separate uh you know home office it also helps separate sort of the personal and professional life uh part of this as well The other one is to remember especially if you're on a conference calls a lot is to silence the ringers on the other personal phone lines and your cell phones you know during the uh work day as well um that's also the case when you record podcasts like I'm doing here I always have to remember to do that as well so that you don't get all kinds of other noise you know happening uh in the background <clears throat> the other one that's that's related to that is if you have uh animals at home especially dogs um it's uh it's important too to separate them significantly from where you are in the um in uh in in the house um because there's an interesting sort sort of uh phenomenon uh that happens as well when uh when when dogs uh, uh may be perfectly quiet uh while you're listening to other people on a conference call let's say you're on a really important executive conference call let's say and uh your your dog is very quiet sitting there nicely beside you um and now it's your part of the presentation that you need to 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 give and as soon as you start talking your dog now thinks that you're talking and uh, talking to him or her and they start to talk back they start to 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 uh to bark as mo- uh, there, there's no more embarrassing and and you know experience and and also makes it look rather and sound rather unprofessional if that happens and it's also the case that it'll you know make you flustered it it, it screws up you know your f- uh, focus and concentration in the uh, meeting that you're trying to have and so that's again another uh w- w- idea for making sure that you're um able to work in a quiet and and professional kind of uh, environment so, uh, another one that's related to that that uh, one of my staff has has, has found uh, really important he works uh, from home and he uh is the um he's he's alone at home 
and that he finds that needing to put a do not disturb sign on the front door uh, is important when you're uh, hosting important conference calls because when you have deliveries, for example, you know they uh, they see that there's a car there. They may even see that there's there's a light on or whatever, and they just keep on bing bonging, and you're then you know bothered by that sound in the background. And even if it weren't to be heard on the uh, conference call, it's still going to mess up your con- concentration and and uh, you know mess up the ways in which you uh, work. The other suggestion is to use a comfortable just desk chair and a uh, good home uh, office ergonomics and that it's really important to not just be using you know your kitchen chair uh, for this if you're going to be working many many hours it's really worth the investment to make sure that you've got an environment that really is optimal for you to work for um, a, a lengthy period of time and, and it's often the case as well that you know when you work at work often companies spend some significant expense at making sure that the appropriate uh, environment is there for you when you're uh, uh, when you're working there and you got to make sure that's the same thing in your home office as well the other suggestion is to schedule a break in the middle of the day get out of the chair go do something else you know clear your head uh, rejuvenate your body you know go for a walk a workout a run you know go do do some errands uh, basically get out of there and and also potentially do something that uh, involves other people you know when one of the staff members goes off and goes to the gym uh, uh, in the middle of the day when he's working at home and that finds it a really good way to clearly clear his head and also go and you know see other people and the like and breaks up the the day uh, with not just being there uh, alone the entire day uh, as well um, the other one is to uh, use tools if you can to imp- improve the remote experience there are ways of using you know video and and audio equipment uh, I know my team has tried uh, a few and found some real success with these the notion of shared whiteboard sharing desktop uh, uh, type tools there's a variety of things out there now that uh, that try to improve um, the experience of working remotely or participating repo- remotely in, in meetings and I think it's really worth the effort if you have a team that have, has um, <coughs> some remote members on it to um, uh, to really invest in those kinds of tools as well <coughs> you know we talked before about our companies talk about the notion of um, being diverse and making sure that we include um, uh, you know uh, uh, contributions in terms of of uh, uh, making sure that we have appropriate uh, um, male female representation on teams and that we're not you know biased in that way we also talk about making sure that you know we include visible minorities and all of the factors when we talk about wanting to have a diverse workforce and trying to do everything that doesn't minimize the ways in which you know various people with various skills um, uh, so that make make sure that they're not limited in terms of their contribution to to the enterprise that you're trying to run and this topic of remote is 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 an important one to think about in that context because you know if you are working remotely you are also working in with a bunch of handicaps and I think that it's uh, the role of the leader and other um, team members to make sure that they can do whatever they can to uh, remove those handicaps uh, in terms of the ways in which the team operates so that you can um, get the benefit of all the skills and knowledge and experience of all the staff including remote members of the team you know as well um, the other uh, you know suggestion is to you know do these regular you know lunch dates uh, again where you can come into the office or even if you uh, are not uh, able to be in the office at all still make sure you go out and uh, um, schedule some time that you're going out doing other things like going out uh, for lunch with other co- colleagues or friends. Um, there's a suggestion for waiting until your kids are old enough so that they will not be home uh, to disturb you during meetings and that sort of thing. My my own experience is I have kids that are <coughs> at um, uh, different ends of the spectrum in terms of, of age and <coughs> have some young young kids as well and even if they are um, around for the day they typically aren't but even if they are uh, they know that uh, when I'm working at home and I'm involved in a conference call for example then uh, they know not to come in 
And uh, in my experience, uh, as long as the rest of the family knows that uh, when you go into that room, you're at work and you can't be bothered, then uh, they will respect that. But <clears throat> you can make your own judgment based on the ways in which your family works, whether you are able to and are ready to and whether your family is able to you know, work with you in this regard as well. Um, the other uh, uh, the other suggestion that I've also seen elsewhere um, is uh, the notion that there can be biases in an organization uh, about somebody that's working from home and using that particular terminology and uh, the suggestion is rather to refer to like, like for example in, in IM systems you you often uh, show your status in terms of <coughs> where where you are uh, uh, geographic status and uh, rather than saying you know that you're working from home the suggestion is to say that you're at the remote office instead so it doesn't bring it in to the notion that you're you know working at home you know that somehow you're you know slacking off or you're somehow have some you know for people that ha that that don't have a a uh, very open mind about you know that kind of working arrangement um there are people that are biased uh, about you know, uh, working home. Lots of managers are. I I I tend to be um, of a very strong view that I'd like to have people work wherever they feel comfortable working. And a lot of the time, that, that is in fact uh, remote, either far far remote, and still have the best talent that's available. And I have that on my team. I also have people that work from home. You know, most of the time, and also people that are like essentially in each of the three models that I talked about, including myself. But I think they're, uh, and, and my overall objective is as long as I've got the right skills on the team, they're motivated appropriately to, to uh, accomplish the tasks that they need to be accomplishing. And it is admittedly a more senior team as well. But um, that this is, you know, the way to uh, work. And, and if they deliver on their, you know, work objectives uh, appropriately and they do it even better uh, by working from home you know, either part or all of the time, then uh, I think that's a real plus. So I, I, I tend to be rather um, supportive and I may not be uh, representative either necessarily of of managers, senior managers in, in uh, on this topic. And so there may be instances where you really want to, you know, work from home and that you really think that it's uh, beneficial for you to work that way and that you have better, you know, results. Uh, you'll also, you know, your your own stress in your life is better and all the rest of it. So, but your, you know, management team may not be quite as supportive of that. And you want to then also make sure that you uh, look after that bias by doing things like, you know, even reference to, you know, the notion of remote office rather than working from home, little subtle differences like that. And also you want to make sure that if you're using things like instant messaging, that you make sure that you're always av available on there. You know, there may be um, instances where, you know, managers may be worried about whether their staff is really working or not, you know, when they're working from home. And um, th there are, you know, good practices if you do know that there's or you suspect that your manager may have um, that kind of a concern. Uh, be sure to always, uh, even if your head's down, work, uh, working uh, to also make sure that you're still available all the time uh, on instant messaging at the time that you're actually uh, uh, working. So it's a, it's 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 really just being aware of what others, uh, what other people sort of. Uh, biases may be on this topic and just to cover that topic too if you're you know a manager or leader of a team and let's say you have a more junior team or you may even have some some staff that you're a bit you know concerned about um, either concerned about in the form of you know they you're not too sure that they would in fact do the work if they rem worked remotely uh, or instances where you know they really need the benefit especially brand new staff to an organization you know they may need to have um, a lot more more guidance and support and that can be um, as we talked earlier uh, very much more um, uh, able to be delivered and, and provided you know uh, in person uh, where that's a possibility you know in terms of, of um, you know people that uh, may well want to work from home and they're you know still within driving distance let's say of a of a location uh, you might want to if you're a leader, think twice about that. And that's also for that matter, if you're an employee as well, um, if you think that the, you know, challenges involved are, out, uh, you know, are um, 
uh, outweigh the benefits, uh, then you shouldn't do it. And it really does take some serious thinking that um, what these benefits and the challenges are uh, in this environment try to mitigate you know, the challenges to, to achieve the benefits, but it takes some serious thinking about whether these you know, really do outweigh each other. Because a lot of people don't think about what some of the challenges might be. They just simply think, oh, it'd be great not to have to compute, commute and be able to you know, work at home. But it really is worth uh, thinking about the challenges here you know, as well. The, the, the last one uh, that I would add, and that's my own sort of experience, and that is, um, I mean, I do uh, maybe one day, I try to at least have one day or two days uh, a week where I um, work uh, remotely, uh, work from home. And the way that I've uh, I've tried tried it in a variety of different ways over the years, but uh, what I've been finding is really beneficial is to uh, schedule certain types of work during that time. So I basically block the day, and I um, uh, I and, and I have a secretary that basically schedules uh, handles my calls and my schedule uh, scheduling and the like, and I uh, I basically ask her to. Uh, not schedule anything that's going to be face-to-face during those uh, days. Also, uh, make sure that there's nothing uh, that is discretionary that's scheduled into those days. So if, if it's you know uh, a meeting that can happen any time of the week, um, but uh, doesn't have to be on a particular day that I've chosen to work from home, that uh, it doesn't get scheduled on that day. Um, and also, where possible, have some meetings moved that may, uh, in fact, uh, be requested to be on those, you know, work at home days. There are still certain types of events, certain types of um, conference calls and the like that uh, are unavoidable and don't make sense to to move. And I still handle those from home. But I try to get good blocks of time. You know, my day is typically filled with lots and lots of meetings. And if I don't do this kind of thing, you don't ever get any time to really think or read or write. And um, I really uh, uh, sharpen the acts if uh, we go back to Stephen Covey's uh, seven habits you know this whole notion that you need to sometimes step back and really refresh yourself and really sharpen the axe be able to uh, improve your skills you know do your reading uh, do do even if you're doing things like uh, performance appraisals you need some time to think and really write the, this kind of stuff and unless you block uh, time that you work from home let's say to do those things at least in my experience then you only ever really get around to doing them you know late in the evening, let's say, uh, after you've already done a whole work day. And so if you really want to have a, you know, less stress in your life, uh, in my experience, and this year I've, I've been pretty um, careful at the ways in which I um, schedule these days, uh, I've been finding these hugely beneficial in getting a lot more work done. And I think the quality of my work is, has improved, you know, drastically as well. So that's an instance of, of essentially doing, you know, work from home one one day or uh, two days a week um, and getting a lot of work done and also setting the expectation you know with the rest of the staff that you know I'm going to be remote you know the, those days and often that's the case as well that uh, other members of the team you know work uh, remotely on some of those days yeah, as well uh, and when we do have a conference call then then it ends up being entirely um, remotely all the way around and everybody's on an equal footing so it was a lot of material. It was a longer uh, podcast than normal because uh, there's a lot of material to go through. And I'd like to, you know, thank uh, my team members that uh, provide a lot of those ideas and experiences because these are people, like I said, that have been in many cases uh, working this way for a long time. Whether it's uh, any of those three models that I talked about earlier, and I think they really do have a summary of the benefits, the challenges, and I think some really good advice uh, for anybody that is either considering working this way is already working in uh, this way um, in terms of working remotely and uh, looking to improve their habits at uh, making their day a little better and uh, their jobs a little better you know as well so this uh, probably concludes this particular segment as usual you should probably give some of these things a try not necessarily all at once and as we typically uh, suggest take one or two of the ideas here if you want to do for example you, let's say you don't do um, work from home or working remotely uh, at all right now but it intrigues you that you'd like to give this a try in terms of uh, maybe one day a week 
you know, choose a day of the week, you know, talk to your manager or if you are a manager, you know, just just uh, talk to the rest of the staff about, you know, working this way and uh, try it. You know, really try to say, okay, I want to want to uh, block my calendar. I want to go and, uh, you know, do this piece of writing. I want to do this, uh, you know, following up on these podcasts or whatever during this time. And uh, essentially go and give that a go. If, if you're a... Um, a remote employee now, um, and are uh, let's say in that t- second category, uh, you might want to think about okay, well you know don't normally go into the office, and uh, been finding it kind of uh, uh, feeling distant from staff there and the like. You may want to you know restructure your time, even if you have a fairly fairly significant di- distance to drive. And I've got people on my team that do that 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 have a fairly significant uh, distance, but it's really worth it to them to be in person. Uh, during, uh, you know, uh, critical meetings. So it might even be just one afternoon a week that you take the effort to get into the office and really stay connected. And if you're in that third category in terms of really being uh, distant, you may want to think about, you know, improving the technology that you're using in terms of doing this stuff, you know, working with the rest of the team to see if they want to adopt some other technologies, if you want to uh, 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 try other systems of indicating when when somebody can't be heard on the team. as well as you might want to suggest, you know, uh, getting together as a face-to-face, and if you haven't asked recently to your manager uh, to see maybe uh, if you could uh, have a trip to the uh, uh, the home office to um, or the office where the rest of the staff is to be able to uh, get together uh, with them. So it's it's um, a, a way of working that is increasingly uh, prominent. Uh, and uh, common and like I said before uh, very little discussion I think goes on about this and I think it really deserves a lot of attention I really hope that a lot of the ideas or some of the ideas that I've talked about here can be beneficial to you as well so that's it for this week I wish you all the best with this and we'll talk to you next time bye for now